Everybody hear me okay? Let me just say hello in the chat or just say that I am live. I see Andrew's here in the blue font. Andrew, thank you for moderating. And hello, Fred and Virtual Deb and Cashew and Carolyn and Bonnie and Tim. Nicole. Good to see everybody. Oh, cool. Hey, Sue. Hey, Jeff. Ruth, Bonnie. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Do Nothing Project. I am your host for this evening. My name is Jeff Warren. Hello to all my friends. Hello to Andrew in the blue font. Thank you for moderating, my friend. Hi, Siobhan, Johnny, RT Traveler, Paul, Victoria, Marjorie. Mm. Mitch, Industrial Fridge. Yes, thank you for naming that, Andrew. And back in the uh, my friend's cafe. It's about the only quiet place I can find to do this on a Sunday night. So the, uh, the good is it's mostly quiet. The uh, challenging is heavy on the mostly. I've got an industrial fridge over here that keeps coming on and off, but it's good to meditate to, actually. I prefer meditation drone. Uh, so, yeah, welcome. Welcome back to all the regulars. If you're new to the Do Nothing Project, prepare to be profoundly underwhelmed. <laughs> Truly, nothing much of anything happens. That's the point. It's just an opportunity to sit in community and, um, I guess, settle, reset, various ways to talk about it, many of which I've attempted in past do-nothing projects and will not say too much tonight, but uh, other than just it can be really nice to uh, sit down without an agenda, without any um, uh, sort of... (laughs) <laughs> thing you're trying to get done I mean you could be trying to meditate but for myself actually I, I'll just connect it to where I'm at today um, I it's my birthday tomorrow um, and I just had a lot on my mind today and this weekend and when I have a lot on my mind I actually notice it physically in my head as tension in the head a kind of uh, heaviness in the brow I can feel the energy of the thinking like literally pulsing through my brain or whatever it's doing but I can feel the energy of it tiring me out Um, and it feels physically like uh, a kind of tension in the forehead often or um, and so what I'm going to do tonight (laughs) so for me there's just to be able to have an intention to not sit here and worry about my worries to not have to accomplish anything, to get anything figured out, just to just be a body here, that already is healing for me. And then there are certain prompts that I use to, for myself that kind of help me let go. And I often, sometimes I, I say them occasionally in the Do Nothing Project, but I don't necessarily teach a technique here other than the basic technique of just existing and trying to um, be okay with existing <laughs> Uh, and which is a, te- a technique, of course. Um, but for anyone, really, you can make it your own. You know, you can, I, I always say this, you can stretch or you can um, lay down or you can you know, do the dishes or um, it, it's just it, what's most important about this half hour is really the intention to uh, take this time for yourself to kind of to reset, to settle, to just listen to life in some way. Um and that framing in and of itself already does something, I think, interesting and helpful and special. And then the fact that there's a community here doing it with you, it kind of, you know, makes it feel less insane, more like, oh, yeah, other people are doing this, too. I guess it's normal. Um, and then sometimes there is a bit of a technique that might be talked about. So what I'll just mention here is um, I'll just guide my, my usual practice, which you can feel free to tune out or you can have it kind of be in the background. But I will say a few cues around um, what I use when I happen to have a day with a lot of rumination. Little reminders I say to myself that kind of help let go of it. And of course, the idea for meditation is not to get rid of your thoughts. You're not going to be able to. But you can often get rid of what's fixated in them. You can. What you notice is uh, we, we have a nice way of separating mind and body in our culture. But of course... They're not really separate. And you can actually notice that if you just focus on the physical part of your body, 
your physical head, your the whole body itself, the more open the body is, the more equanimous, the more you loosen the forehead and get rid of any worry lines, that in and of itself will have an effect on the frequency and intensity of your thoughts. It, there's a bit of a delay, but the more you have, you kind of notice your body and let, let it loosen and let it open, there is a corresponding shift that will eventually happen or can happen. Now, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, sometimes there's a lot of momentum going on, but in general. So I'll offer a few cues around that uh, in case it's helpful for people. And um, yeah, not much more to say. Uh, don't see most of the comments that go by fast. Thank you, friends, for <laughs> wishing happy birthday. Uh, nice. I don't even know how old I am. 53. Happy 53. 53. Oh my God. My son's obsessed with ages. Yes, everyone their age. And uh, yesterday he met someone who was 82. He was very impressed. <laughs> Happy to be here with you all. I'm trying to look at some of this, but. <sighs> okay. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Nice, Ruth. Big seven zero. You'd be. You're a hero to my son already. Andrew's got 82 there. <laughs> Mitch. Okay. Okay, here we go. Normally I have a light, but I forgot it. But it doesn't really matter, it seems here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, good to be here with everybody. As always with the Do Nothing Project, you can make this your own. You can send me out and do your own meditation, your own version of doing nothing, or you can follow loosely with these with the guidance, which is really just, you know, loose invitations. I like beginning with the breath it's because I've often forgotten to breathe. Now I notice I'm breathing. Oh, yeah, breath. And I particularly notice that little breath is getting to my belly. So I try to breathe into my belly as opposed to my chest, which tends to be more of a heady kind of breath, more of an anxious breath. Nice and slow. Deep works for you. Deep's good. But, you know, putting too much attention on your breathing, for some people, makes them anxious. Makes them more, you know, kind of isn't, doesn't feel comfortable, and that's fine. You don't really need to. It's only if, uh, only if it works for you as something settling. Just breathe in. Stretch up a bit. That includes if you're laying down, you can stretch out. In breath is like the elongation, and the out breath is the kind of the settling, the letting go of any let goable tension. So that's what we mentioned off the top. You know, if you deliberately, sometimes I'll just do a little body scan from the top of my head, just kind of notice my forehead and decide to loosen it, even if I think it's normal. I have an intention to soften the lines even more because you often don't know. Same with the eyes, let them kind of sink in. And now here's a strange cue. Imagine your brain is softening and it's like, it was a little bit tense trying to like pull down to the front of your forehead. And now as you relax here, it's so relaxed, it just slides back in your cranium like boop kind of lands at the back. So imagine, of course, it's mostly metaphorical, mostly, but imagine that were actually happening. Like loosen your, the eye sockets, loosen your jaw. 
your whole face be slack. Like you, you loosen the skin and it doesn't, it's not taut anymore. So things can just start flowing through your face into your jaw and chest. The uh, famous vagus nerve runs behind the ear, I think, down into the neck through here, the throat. So a little opening up the throat and loosening it can take some of the tension off that nerve. It helps us shift into a more receptive state. A little opening, kind of a little mini half yawn. Oh. And then keeping the front of the body open too. What does that mean? It means the opposite of that is in the beach body, the bracing against sound, the expecting bad news, the thinking someone's going to punch you in the stomach. Instead, can you loosen and sort of trust the space to be able to hold you? And there is something kind of vulnerable about that, about just loosening. It's like you're loosening the armor. And you can kind of tune and see, does it feel like you're so open, sound, just it's not going to bounce off you, it's going to get absorbed or flow through. So open, it's like you can feel the um, pores on your skin a little bit more. Or you're noticing the clothes against your skin. We're really going for the body <laughs> relaxation here. And this can be done when you're if you're moving too, or in any other way you might be. The basic aspect of meditation is just sitting and being. It's the permission to be and you just sit here without trying to control anything. And includes your thoughts, you know. There's lots of thinking. It's just what's happening today. Just let let it all unspool. The only difference is you're just not in there deliberately feeding the thinking, pushing it, pushing it forward, rolling the ball up the mountain. Instead, you just kind of notice thinking's happening, and you pan back into the bigger space of the body of awareness. And it just becomes one more thing happening along with the sound of the fridge turning on and off. And then we sit. Then spontaneously we notice we've actually started paying attention to something simple in our experience, like a like the sensation of breath or sound or another sensation, and that's fine. That can be nice to have a home base to sink into. But you don't need to do that. But you can. It can feel nice. But just see if you can do it with the least amount of effort, with the least amount of effort you can expend just being delicately present. 
every once in a while, checking in with the forehead and softening the worry lines again. Loose the face, anything that's trying to push forward. Just let the ground hold you underneath you, supported by the ground. Sometimes the sound starts up and it can kind of be startling. What can you do to smooth that out? Even after the fact, imagining a new sound popping in, but you're so open and smooth, there's no uh, flinch. Of course, if you do flinch, it's not a big deal at all, but that's the, that's the kind of place to play is that edge. Similarly, can you be so, can your body be so loose and relaxed that it kind of, the edge of where your skin ends and the air begins is it sort of gets extra blurry. Like it doesn't matter because it doesn't, not, not in this context. Sometimes, as we get a little bit more absorbed, there can be a um, a way in which we start to pay attention to something in our experience that's not really um, very concrete. It could be just the feeling of stillness in the body if the body's not moving. What is it? What is the experience of not moving and stillness? 
or could be you get interested in what is an experience of space or blankness or quiet. And that's very, from a meditation point of view, those can be very rich places to begin to explore, but not with an agenda, not some idea of what you've got to find, just this delicate being with this as well as everything else happening in experience. It's not even like you find something. It's more like you are still. You are silence. You are space. Just be those things. And by the way, if thoughts are still there, and of course that's fine, but another little cue I like to play with sometimes, I just say, if I have a thought or something I'm wondering about, I just say to myself, don't know, don't need to know. Don't know, I <laughs> don't need to know. Don't know, don't need to know. I can be like, ah. Let's go back to being a body.
fun to think about here at the end, like what can you let go of? Like literally in your experience, what can you surrender even more? What can you, what holding, what tension, what gripping, what certainty, what conviction, what subtle doing, what efforting, what performing. Really just, as if you could just collapse all the boundaries, they could all just melt and then whatever's left just flowing on with the moving sounds and sensations of life. There's no resistance whatsoever, no structure. Because it's our experience we're talking about consciousness. You just let it be completely smooth. I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> I forgot to set a timer. Hmm. So I'll just finish with a minute of uh, gratitude practice, or whatever you feel like you want to be grateful for or you want to appreciate right now. Maybe it's appreciating, you know, an animal in your life or a kid or a family member or a friend. Maybe it's appreciating where you live, some part of nature, experience you had, your memory, anything, just something to be a part of your experience right now, quality of quiet that you appreciate, a sense of community maybe. Finding a little chunk of life to be. And then broaden it out. Stretch it out like coffee. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for your practice. Good to see with you. It's funny, you know, when you, um, there's this known thing in meditation, like if you ever go to a retreat or you do more, you know, when you get, you can be, it can happen even in short retreat, short sits, where you get pretty kind of concentrated, like kind of absorbed in something. And uh, and things get can get a bit settled and you're a bit absorbed. Of course, it doesn't always go down this way, but from that place when you do a little like friendliness or loving kindness or gratitude thing at the end, sometimes it can just be really powerful. It's like it fills up the whole space. I remember on a retreat once I was super concentrated and then I 
and I did like a um, loving kindness practice because the teacher guided it, and I, I could feel it in my fingers. <laughs> I was like, "What is that?" This went through the whole body. Um, oh, cool, cool stuff happening in meditation. Thanks, friends. Thanks for all the kind wishes, birthday wishes. Uh, don't know what I'm gonna do for my birthday. I don't actually have a plan. I would just try to deal with my kids. <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully go to for dinner with my wife on Thursday. Her birthday is next Monday, so. Nice, Sarah turned into the room and the room became me. Very weird, good weird. That can happen. The boundaries come down. Nice, Brooke saying, so smooth she barely reacted or didn't react when the fridge went on. Glad you liked it, Archie Traveler. Yeah, I, I thought you might jump, Jeff. A little worried about that. Sheila started your book. I have to check and see. Maybe send an email again about it. Uh, it might be at my co-working space or something. Um, okay. <laughs> OV wants Kenobi. There you are, buddy. <laughs> Can I see some Substack? <sighs> nice, Christiana. All right, friends. Well, good to hang out with you. Thanks for all the good wishes. Uh, glad people feel relaxed. I feel much more relaxed than I did before I started, so I really needed that. You know, I should say, uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice to have a meditation that feels relaxed, but the litmus test of whether meditation is working or whether doing nothing is working in your life is... Not so much anything that happens as an experience during it. It's more like when you do it afterwards, how do you feel? Or in your life, how do you feel? You know, because some people have very busy and, you know, the, the meditation itself can feel like, oh, I'm not doing this right or it's not working out or I'm not getting concentrated. But then actually you end up feeling better or you just are having that as part of your daily ritual is making your life better. And so that's important to remember. Thanks, XPLR. All right, friends, time to go to, for me to go back and finish what remains to be done for the bedtime routine. I'll see everybody next week. You're welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks to everybody. Mm -hmm.